Are you looking to use henna to color your gray hair and you want the perfect recipe and technique to get long lasting coverage? Well, I got the answer for you right here in this video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Khadija. I am the CEO and founder of Henna Sook. I specialize in natural hair dyeing with henna and Ayurvedic hair care and also gorgeous henna body art. So welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. Let's get into this. Let's go over a few things first. So first, gray hair are like a totally different hair than what your natural hair is. It's just, it's just plain and simple. It is a different hair. So we are dealing with a hair that is more coarse. It uh, resistant to coloring. Um, it is definitely, you know, not open to receiving color and treatments in general as easily as your natural hair usually would have been. Color can be hard to penetrate, especially at the roots. So it's the same thing for henna and all chemical dyes. If you're experiencing that, that is just kind of the way that it is. So we have to do a few things to like, you know, work around that. And this is also why you may have to do more than one application. You know, you might not always be one and done when it comes to henna hair color. You might have to build up that tone. You might have to do, you know, two or three applications. You may have to be patient with it, but the payoff of naturally coloring your hair versus using chemicals is huge, you know, for your health, for your whole body from head to toe. I mean, you are taking care of your body your hair in a much better way so you have to approach it with a level of patience and it's very very important to note that in order for indigo to cling to your hair strands you definitely have to have henna in your mix because henna acts as the base and that foundation of henna color allows the indigo to cling to the hair strand and bond better and make it longer lasting so when you're using your henna and choosing the one for your coverage, make sure it is a pure body art quality henna powder that we carry here at Henna Soak, um, especially our Red Raj. If your hair is very, very resistant to coloring, it's going to secure the indigo and get you much better, longer lasting coverage as well. Some advice I wanna share with you when you are coloring gray hair and you're just having you know, a struggle with it, Make sure that you're clarifying your hair beforehand. Use our soap nut hair wash. Our soap nut hair wash, it is infused with soap nuts and peppermint. And you know, soap nut acts as a natural clarifier. It's perfect for your hair to open everything up. And the peppermint as well, because it's just so, you know, opening, you know, it just makes the hair receive, you know, the color so much better, especially those tough, stubborn grays. So I highly recommend that you clarify beforehand. All right, so let's mix up some of your henna powder. Okay, because you need henna powder. It acts as your base. It helps the indigo cling better to the hair strand. And I'm using warm to hot distilled water to mix this up. Henna typically takes about three to four hours to be ready, you know, completely. So you can just let it sit there and come back to it. You don't necessarily have to cover it. If you want to, that's optional. That is completely up to you. But just add in your liquid slowly at a time until you get it to the consistency of kind of like a thick full fat yogurt or mashed potatoes and let that sit there and get dye release. And this is going to be the base that will help the indigo cling to your hair strands to get the best gray coverage. And if you are by chance using henna by itself, this will also cover your grays. All of our henna powders work amazing to get you gray coverage. But if you do have resistant hair strands and hard to color hair, you definitely want to check out our Red Rash Henna Powder because it has the highest loss on content, which means that it will dye the gray hair better and stronger. And now we're going to mix up our indigo powder. There we go. Got a good amount of indigo there. Add in our warm to hot distilled water. Mix this up really well. And gently, you might notice that the indigo powder and some of our Ayurvedic herbs in general just kind of float. Just give it that moment. It's gonna thicken up really nice. There it goes, see? See, there you have it. 
and then you'll notice it probably needs a little bit more water and this has a faster die release so this will be ready in about 20 to 30 minutes And I like to leave everything thick on purpose because that way I can add more liquid later. You know, I just want it to be wet, like wet like this and still pretty thick, not liquidy. And that's a mistake that some people also do make when they're coloring their hair in grays. They make it too runny. This is not a chemical hair treatment. It's not going to be very liquidy. It's going to be more paste-like. So let it sit, have dye release, don't make it too thin. Let me show you in a little bit. Once these release that dye fully and they're ready to use, I will show you exactly the right consistency it needs to be so you get the best gray coverage. While you wait for this to have its dye release, in the meantime, I want you to pause and make sure that you're also going to be watching the video that I have on applying the henna and the indigo hair color because the way you apply it also affects the color outcome. You definitely want to watch that video because I have really good tips in there that will help you get better coverage. It's very important to also leave this in a paste form. I actually just realized very recently that some customers were mixing in a little thin, kind of like how chemical colors are mixed. And you don't want to have this runny, watery, you know, non-paste anymore, <laughs> you know, inky type of formulation. Please make sure that your henna and your indigo are paste-like. It has to be like a thick yogurt or, you know, you know, very fluffy pancake mixture. You know, it has to be able to be on the hair in that way to get you the best color. And it's not gonna like dry out. And that's another thing. You don't want it drying out on your hair either. You know, you wanna wrap it and cover it up. The edges especially keep them moist and dampened if you really want good penetration. But the edges and around the ears uh, can definitely always be stubborn. Just make sure that you're layering at the very end, another thick layer around your edges to get the color really good because, you know, sometimes if you don't do that properly, it'll just be dry and crumbly and it's not really doing anything when it's like that. And you also want to make sure to use our henna care balm only along the hairline, un like under the hairline, you know, on the scalp. Make sure you're not getting like oils or Vaseline or balms or anything. Don't use Vaseline, by the way. Any of those things on your hair because if it gets on your hair, you're not going to get coverage on that spot. So I also noticed that some people were getting like yellow and different tones and color. Like when you know your henna is working well, it won't be yellow. Like there's no way that it should be dyeing your hair yellow. If anything, it's going to be this bright, crazy orange, <laughs> you know, or coppery tone that's going to really stand out. But if your henna hair color gets kind of yellow, like something's wrong. So that's a flag. You know, so when we're kind of discussing, those are things that we question, we ask about, you know, how did it come out? And like, oh, because if it comes out kind of yellow, that means your henna is pretty weak. And it means that your indigo is probably not going to work well, leave a greenish tint. And it's just, it's just kind of like a, a trickle down effect of just a bad combination of like that it won't come out well at all, you know, so it's just showing you that something went wrong. So just note that's really, really important. So you might have to color your hair a couple of times and probably maybe about two or three times, maybe sometimes even four to really get it to layer. It depends actually on how resistant your grays are or how light your hair is. Uh, typically, it's not really, I haven't seen four times. For me personally, I usually see two or three times, you know, to get it really a good, you know, saturation and, and the colors building and as you do more applications too, it builds and it clings and it gets stronger as well on the hair strand, which is great. But the roots, remember, those are like virgin, like new hairs as well. So you will have to attack them as such. But don't give up. Don't give up. You know, you got this. Let's talk about this dye release. I mean, look at this indigo. This is what your indigo should look like when it's ready. Look, look at this, guys. Ready? Pull back. Boom! You see that light color? This is indigo that has achieved dye release. And really, it's only 20 to 30 minutes. So we know that's ready. Now let's check out our henna. Oh, yes. How do I know? I know just by seeing all these pretty little pools. Look at all this little pooling of orangey goodness. You see all that? Look at that. And I pull it back, and it's a little lighter green underneath. 
Yes, okay. So I'm seeing that change in the color and the consistency and it's just getting all smooth and creamy. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna show you how to make the recipe for resistant gray hair. So first and foremost, if you have very resistant grays and you do want specifically a dark tone, you want like a chocolate brown, you want even like a black or a soft black, you're kind of going in that direction, even, even let's say possibly a brown. This would be definitely a brown recipe. You're going to be using equal parts of henna. Pour that into my big bowl because I need a bigger bowl to do all of this mixing. Just like that. All right, and then I'm going to add my indigo. And remember, optionally, you can add in some aloe vera powder. If you want to add more moisture, have your hair feeling softer and just amazing, right? So, and then from here, we just mix it all together. You could even add the aloe vera powder at this point if you would like to, you could definitely do so. And you only need a small amount. For this amount, I would probably only add in about you know, one, one teaspoon should be plenty. It goes a really long way. So this consists is pretty nice. It's a little too thick. So just a touch. So only a little bit of warm to hot distilled water. Not too much. I don't really need that much. I just want a little bit because I remember I want it to be a paste. But look how creamy and smooth this is, guys. I mean, come on. So this is your brown recipe. So your hair should be freshly washed. Ideally, with remember, use that soap net hair wash, guys. And then you're going to apply this all over and leave it in your hair for three to four hours. If you have a steam, like a steamer or a heat cap, you can cut that time in half. So make sure you apply it all over. Watch that application video. And then you can wash it out with our cleansing co-wash. And then from there, this is the trick. You may have a really nice brown tone and if you are happy that's great honestly a lot of people who are doing this for the first time probably don't get that on their grades right away the first time so what do we do well ladies and gentlemen we are going to be after that recipe has washed out and your hair is still damp you're going to be mixing up some more indigo because we have none left so we have to mix some more up and enough to do your hair again so you're going to be definitely coloring your hair again with just indigo. And what I want you to do is leave that indigo in for just an hour or two. And yes, an hour or two just to get that brown, dark brown tone. If you want it to be black, you can leave it on for three to four hours. That's fine. And you'll get the color that you want. So that is that's the trick. <laughs> you got to get that indigo in a second step. It's going to just layer and get darker and it's going to come out exactly the way that you want to. And this is kind of like this, the, the way that I feel like speeds up the whole process of doing, you know, several applications to build up to this tone. But yeah, this is exactly what I recommend for you. So there you have it. Our natural henna hair color. Get rid of those pesky grays. That's my tip for you guys to get the best possible coverage and another tip is if you have someone around that can check out your hair if you're at home and just make sure you got all the spots you know that will be helpful as well or just give yourself a really good massage and make sure it feels cool like a cool sensation all over all over your scalp and then you'll know that you got everywhere and remember it takes a little patience at first but the payoff of doing your hair naturally is, is priceless. So definitely, you know, try this method out and let me know in the comments below if you tried it out and I'd love to hear how it came out. Or are you still struggling? Do you have any henna hair color questions? You know, and you're just wondering like, where do I go from here? Like, what do I do after? Or if you have anything that comes to mind, let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to answer questions for you. And if you really want more of a one-on-one, -on -one, I actually do virtual consultations. So you could definitely book that. Just go to hennasook.com, click on book now, 
and boom, there you go. There you have it. You can have a virtual consultation with me. But thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Get the little bell, you know, going so you can get those notifications because I have new videos for you every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And in the next coming weeks, I'm going to be sharing with you the behind the scenes about the new location and how I'm going to need your support to help me open this space up. So please stay tuned. I really want you to be part of this grand opening. It's, uh, I'm like so excited about it. In the next coming months, we are going to be having a ton of fun. So hit the subscribe and the bell so that you don't miss a thing. I will see you next time. Again, don't forget, let me know your questions below. I got you and I'm, we're in this together. So let me know what I need to, you know, help you with down below. I'll talk to you soon.